Good evening. This is the February 13, 2014 meeting of the Jefferson City Planning and Zoning Commission. My name is Ralph Robinette. I am the chairman of the commission and will be presiding over the meeting. At this time, we would like to introduce our council liaison and other members of the commission and staff. Commissioner. Mike Mahalovich, council liaison. Bunny Tricky Cotton. Bob George. Dave Nunn. Chris Jordan. Chris Yarnell. Dean Dutoy. Ron Fitzwater. Shane Wade, city staff. Eric Barron, city staff. Jeremy Cobra, law department. The city code authorizes nine regular members and three alternates. Alternates are designated to vote upon the absence or disqualification of any regular members. A quorum of five members or alternates is necessary to conduct business. I hereby declare that a quorum is present. Commissioners absent from this meeting are Michael Lester, Dale Vaughn, Jack Deacon. Therefore, all alternates can vote. Are there any commissioners that wish to disqualify themselves or recluse themselves from any of the issues on the agenda? Seeing none, we have two cases this evening. Uh, I just will call out the case and just simply identify if there's an applicant here who's present to present it. Those cases are case number PE14002, 1407, and 1411 Southwest Boulevard, rezoning CO to C1. Is someone here to represent that, that case? Okay. We also have case P14003, replat of lot three of South Ridge Village. Subdivision Section 1. Is there anyone here to represent that case? Okay. Uh, do any of you wish for a continuance or you want to go forward with it at this time? We will go forward. Okay. We will now have the staff format of the hearing in order of testimony. Eric. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to briefly describe the procedures of the Planning Commission. The proceedings of the meeting are being recorded, so I ask that when you speak, please step to the microphone and give your name and address for the record. After a brief introduction by city staff, the applicant and applicant's consultants and advisors will explain the proposal. The opening presentation by the applicant shall be limited to 10 minutes, and the applicant shall be given three additional minutes for closing testimony if so requested. We will then ask to hear from supporters of the request. We will then ask to hear from any opponents of the request. We will then ask to hear from anyone else who wishes to speak on the request. And the testimony from supporters, opponents, or other interested parties shall be limited to three minutes, and rebuttal testimony shall be limited to five minutes unless permission is granted by the commission for additional time. City staff will then describe the pr proposal and make the recommendations on their request. In order to reduce the time necessary to hear an application, reference to printed material, including staff reports, applicable findings, ordinances, and our statutes, shall not be read into the record unless directed by the commission and the commission will then close testimony from the floor and the commission will discuss the proposal and then make a motion on the request and the form of the motion shall be positive that is the motion shall be made to accept the request as presented or with modifications stipulations or conditions and a final vote would then be taken eyes in favor nays opposed and the chairman shall announce the results of the vote specifying the number of votes cast in favor and the number of votes cast against the following documents are entered as exhibits for all items under consideration at this meeting. The city code, as amended. The comprehensive plan and land use map. Copies of applications under consideration. A list of property owners to whom notices were sent. The affidavit of publication of the public notice in the newspaper. Copies of drawings, plans, and our renderings under consideration. Letters or a memoranda from staff. The staff reports, minutes of proceedings letters, photos, memoranda, or other materials submitted by the public or the applicant, and the rules of procedure for the Jefferson City, Missouri Planning and Zoning Commission. These items are public record and are available for inspection in the Department of Planning and Protective Services or through the Office of the City Clerk. And please be advised that any items that are presented or otherwise received pertaining to the cases under consideration become the property of the Planning Commission. This includes any photographs, drawings, renderings, petitions, and letters. Thank you. We have no request for any continuance. Therefore, the chair at this time would entertain a motion to adopt the agenda as printed. So moved. 
All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The agenda is adopted. You also have in your packet the minutes from last month's meeting. If you need a couple minutes to look at those, you may do so. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes as presented? Second. All in favor of approving the amendments of last month's meeting as presented indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed nay, the minutes are approved. You have a packet of correspondence that has been received. You may look at those at your convenience or if you have any questions, we can address those at this time. If not, we will go forward. We do not have any unfinished business that I'm aware of. Therefore, we will go to new business. First case, P1400214.07 and 14.11 Southwest Boulevard rezoning from CO to C1. Staff report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, to orient you to the location of this request, uh, up on the screen is a location map and zoning map of the area. You'll notice Stadium Boulevard right at the top of the screen and Southwest Boulevard traveling south through the middle of the screen. And this property is located on Southwest Boulevard uh, about 750 feet south of Stadium. It's a property consisting of 2.24 acres. It's currently zoned CO, Office Commercial. Uh, uh, most recently in use by Metro Business College, uh, there's there's actually two buildings on the property. I think have an aerial, a 2011 air photo of the property. You'll see there's a building toward the front of the property and then also a building at the rear of the property. The building toward the front of the property is, is currently vacant and it was most recently used by Metro Business College. Metro Business College moved out to the uh, Amazonas Drive uh, area uh, about a year ago, I believe. And then the uh, building to the rear is uh, an office building that has, uh, I believe, a couple tenants, but is is partially vacant. the The property owner or owner's representative might have more information as to the the occupancy status of the building. The request is to rezone the property from CO to C1. The stated purpose of the request is to make the property uh, available for general retail uses. Uh, there's uh, on the application form you'll you'll notice that uh, they specifically refer to a furniture store I think what they meant to write on there was a, a furnishings or a home interiors type of, of of Retail store, but I believe that the the general intent is just to make the building available for any any retail tenant uh, Back to the zoning map uh, very briefly uh, to the rear of the property it is bordered by an rs2 single-family residential zoning district i i have a couple pictures of the property uh this one is uh of the front of the front building and uh, it's basically looking south along southwest boulevard you'll know southwest boulevard uh, here on the right uh capital region medical center is is actually located uh their their hospital facility uh, there on Southwest Boulevard is located right there where the mouse pointer is. And then I have a picture of the the rear building. And then I also have uh, a picture of uh, both buildings together. There and there. And there's one other item I'll point out going back to the air photo. Uh, the property to the south uh, is is partially zoned C1, which is a the the neighborhood commercial zoning district and the the zoning district that this property is is requesting to become uh, is occupied by by Whaley's Pharmacy. Uh, they have a have a drive-through pharmacy um, and and also several other uh, medical office-oriented uses on that property. But this property 
uh, used to be owned by the, the same property owner is all considered one parcel and uh, was recently split with a line down the, the middle in order to separate the two properties uh, through an administrative parcel division uh, by the city. But it still shares a circulation pattern and, and parking lot circulation pattern with the property to the south. And I believe that's all I have for now. I'd be happy to answer any initial questions. Any questions of staff at this time? Yes, Chris. Eric, obviously the property, as you mentioned, is, is currently zoned commercial CO and will be possibly moving it to C1. Does that trigger any buffering between the residential along Deborah? and this or because it's already commercial uses and and things like that and we're just changing the designation do those not come into play uh it it would essentially be grandfathered uh under both cases it was it was never installed as as a buffer yard according to the current zoning regulations because the the development is is older than the current regulations but also would would become grandfathered but it turns out that the the buffer yard type that's required between a CO and an RS2 district is the same as the buffer yard type between a C1 and an RS2 district they're both a type B buffer yard so there's really no impact yes. Eric um, assuming something then happens with that the portion that's zone C1 and, and I I, am I correct in saying that that the portion between the, the property we're considering tonight and that C1, that little sliver, is is still part of the property that's still zone C1? Uh, yes, and that's I, I would refer to that as a remnant zoning track. It's uh, it was created because there were originally several lots uh, within that single parcel of property, and the the previous zoning to for the for the Whaley's Pharmacy back many years ago. Uh, was only for a single one of those lots then when they split the parcel they did not split it cleanly along those lot lines they split it at the middle point of a lot so there's half of a lot that is is w if rezoned would would still be zoned uh, office commercial we would likely try to clean that up at the first opportunity that but I, I would probably uh, refer you to the to the applicant's representative to, to tell you exactly who who all's in there, but it is an office building, so. Any other questions of staff at this time? Okay, we will now go to the public testimony. We ask all people to testify to give their name and address for our records. Okay, who is here to present the case for P14002, 1402, 1407 and 1411 Southwest Boulevard rezoning from CO to C1? Uh, Chris Gates at 3909 Page Drive. I'm speaking on behalf of Jason Lale. I represent Jason. I work for Cobb Properties and represent him on uh, purchasing the building. Uh, he, in cooperation with the current owners of Southwest Group, are presenting, so I'm speaking on their beha behalf tonight. Um, Jason uh, owns Major Interiors, which is currently located at 712 High Singer, and his plan is uh, that he's going to move his business from 712 High Singer to this property. They do basically interior decorating, uh, the majority of their traffic in the, it's kind of a low traffic uh, type of business um, where it's mainly uh, interior decorators that are there that come in and that go and service their clients, but there is going to be some more public foot traffic as well. Um, uh, let me see. The 1407 right now is currently vacant. Um, it was Metro Business College, and uh, they, are, they are no longer there. 1411, there is a tenant in there. It's a music company right now, I believe. Uh, it's a lady that teaches music, so it's uh, in, at 1411's the rear building. There's not um, his plan right now is just to remodel the both buildings. 
Uh, he's going to do significant improvements to the facade in the front of 1407. Uh, also, a lot of updates to the rear of 1411. If you've been by the buildings, there's there quite a bit of disrepair at this point in time and need a lot of work done to it. So he's planning on redoing that. Um, 1407 is two stories, the front building. The upper level he's planning on occupying for as an owner user uh, for his business and on the lower level uh, that he's going to lease that out for office space. So at this point in time, um, that's pretty much what I have. And any questions? Any questions of Chris? Thank you. Thank you. Who else is here that would wish to testify in favor of this proposal? Anyone else who would like to testify in favor of this proposal? Is there anyone here that would like to speak in opposition to this proposal? Anyone in opposition? Seeing none, we will close the public testimony. Staff report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this property is located on an arterial street, Southwest Boulevard, uh, and it is essentially adjacent to an existing C1 zoning district. Uh, certainly rezoning the property to a C1 district would open up the the uh, different types of uses that are already permitted just south of it uh, for this property. And also, there's a, a pretty major medical facility located uh, essentially just across the street uh, from the property as well, which lends itself a bit to a, a, a higher zoning designation. Uh, also, the connection of this property to the property to the south via the different driveways and, and parking and, and the property of the south being zoned C1 would lend itself to C1 zoning as well. Uh, essentially, use of the property in a retail manner, as stated in the application, should not have a major impact uh, on, the, on the character of the area. It's essentially already a commercial area, and the C1 zoning would only be a slight uh, increase in uh, essentially different types of uses, uh, intensity, um, than, than currently exists. The staff does re recommend approval of the request, and the recommended form of motion is at the, the bottom of the staff report. I'd be happy to answer any additional questions you may have. Any additional questions of staff? Seeing none, the chair would entertain a motion to approve this request. Based on the uh, staff analysis that was provided in our packet, uh, I would move the uh, motion to approve request to rezone the property from CO to C1. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion passes unanimously. Next case is case 14003, F and F Development, 731 Stone Ridge, replat of Lot 3, Stone Ridge Village Subdivision, Section 1, Staff Report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, to orient you to the location of this request, uh, up on the screen is a, is a location map uh, with the zoning also. Uh, you'll notice Missouri Boulevard toward the top of the screen and uh, Stone Ridge Parkway uh, going south through the middle of the screen. Uh, the the property is highlighted in hatch marks there, although the air photo is, is somewhat dated. The property has been, been developed uh, since this aerial photo was taken. But to point out some of the other buildings in the area, just north of the property is the, the Coles department store. I, I do have a more recent aerial photo that actually does show the buildings on the property. So this is the, the same property. Uh, the property is zoned C2, general commercial. Um, but there's a, a series of essentially three um, uh, retail type buildings that were constructed on the property in two different phases. Um, the the first building right there that my mouse pointer is pointing at is a uh, pet smart uh, the second building the smaller one is a is a vacant uh, retail building and then the third one the much larger one is uh, dick's sporting goods 
Uh, let's see, I believe PetSmart was constructed in 2011, and then the smaller shops here in the middle and the Dick Sporting Goods uh, phase of the property was developed in 2012. Uh, this is a subdivision plat, uh, a replat for this particular lot within the subdivision. The subdivision is Stone Ridge Village Section 1, which was originally platted in 2007 and consisted of five lots. Uh, one lot where there's a Buffalo Wild Wings store located right there, a restaurant, and also a GameStop store. The second lot, which was uh, the, the largest in the subdivision, which was for the Coles department store. Lot three, which is the subject of tonight's meeting. And then lots four and five, which are currently vacant and sit as out lots in front of lot three. Uh, the the purpose of the request is to divide the property uh, along the building lines so that each of these individual retail uses sit on their own lot. So there's three uses and dividing the property into three lots with one building on each lot. Uh, there's there's one slight problem with that and that is that the city code, the zoning code, and also the subdivision code require that all lots have street frontage, and and that's a key requirement and for for s some very important reasons which I'll, I'll break down basically the three primary reasons that city codes not only Jefferson cities but many other cities require lots to have street frontage is to ensure that you know the buildings on that lot have adequate access to utilities not just utilities that are in place today but whatever future utilities may come come later to make sure that the 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 property has vehicular access is, is really the second item make sure cars can 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 reach a lot and then the third item is to to make sure that you know businesses on that lot have street frontage in order to place signage so they have a signage presence on whatever street it is they're located off of those are really the, th the three most important reasons why a lot would would need street frontage uh, this is the subdivi proposed subdivision plat, the replat uh, of lot three uh, is located in your packets. Uh, I've outlined the lot lines in yellow because they can get, get lost within some of the, the other items there on the survey. But you'll notice that it's proposed to be divided into three lots, lot 3A, 3B, and 3C. Lot 3A would be the uh, PetSmart building, and it you'll notice has street frontage along one of the two driveway connections to Stone Ridge Parkway. Lot 3B would be the small retail shops that are currently vacant. And you'll notice it has no street frontage. And then Lot 3C is the Dick Sporting Goods. You'll notice it has street frontage on Stone Ridge Parkway through the second driveway. I do have a picture of the building. Uh, this is, is what it looks like essentially today, PetSmart the vacant retail building and the Dick Sporting Goods. And just to give you a better idea on where those property lines would be drawn, they would be, the property lines literally would go down the, the center of the, the walls between the buildings uh, so that the small shops are, are separated from the PetSmart and then also from Dick Sporting Goods. And essentially the purpose to, is to be able to sell those three lots off individually, or, or at least two of them. And... Uh, Uh, you'll notice within the staff report there is technically a, a variance from the subdivision requirements that's built into the staff report and also within the form of the motion at the very end of the staff report along with the motion for for approval of the the sub the replat um, going back to the three items that that are really key for a subdivision or for a lot uh, why it needs to have street frontage um, this subdivision was laid out as part of a coordinated commercial development and uh, there is a reciprocal agreement in place that allows uh, not only the developer but the future property owners within that development certain rights in terms of access across the other other potential owners properties uh, any particular l property owner within the development through this reciprocal agreement that's in place was put in place by the developer at the very beginning of of the subdivision uh, allows utility access across to anyone else also 
uh, allows vehicular access across each other. Um, and then also because the development is a, is a coordinated development, the city code allows uh, s shared signage. And you'll notice uh, if you go there today that there's a, a single large sign up at the corner of Stone Ridge Village and Missouri Boulevard that has uh, many different tenants represented on it from Coles to Buffalo Wild Wings to PetSmart to Dick's Sporting Goods, all on a single sign. Uh, with the signage and utility access and vehicular access all really taken care of up front by the developer, really those three concerns about street frontage go away uh, and therefore essentially lays out uh, staff support for uh, approval of the uh, having a landlocked lot. Whereas in most cases, uh, in other cases of the city where those three items are not guaranteed, uh, it, it would be very difficult for staff to, to lend support for a request like this. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. The developer or the developer's consultants might have additional information. Thank you. Any questions of staff at this time? Dave. And, and I don't know how, how these were constructed with, with those lot lines being like they are. Are the, for instance, what, like the small shop, the one in the center, do they have their own walls? Will this be a common wall? Does that create any problem at all? My understanding is the, the buildings were were built in, in two phases with the PetSmart building being built first and then the small shops and exporting goods essentially built as a single building in phase two. Uh, my understanding is that there's a very small separation in between the pet smart building and the the small shops just a matter of inches but they 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 don't share a wall and then the the small shops and the dick sporting goods do share a wall and that the developer would put in place a um a, a common wall agreement uh, to 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 make sure that's handled between the two future private property owners Don't they, uh, they, they share that common wall, <coughs> maybe you've said that, between Dick's Sporting Goods and, and that small shop, right? Uh, that's my understanding, yes. Because your friend here says uh, the center of the common wall. Yes, those, those two businesses share, share a common wall, the small shops and, and the Dick's Sporting Goods. The small shops being the, the small building right there in, in Dick's Sporting Goods. So that portion of that wall is, is shared between them. And, and the developer would put in place a, a, a common wall agreement to, to make sure that, that, that those two future private property owners, that, that the, the legal agreement that's necessary to make sure that that wall is maintained is, is in place. doesn't include the entire parking lot does, does that I mean but the way it's arranged that parking is part of PetSmart's parking lot so how, do, how does that work that that's not in the lot but it the way the parking spaces are arranged it's their parking yes and that that parking and let me go to the air photo and actually that line is drawn incorrectly but this this one row of of parking actually does belong to to Coles to the owner of the Coles property. Okay. Going back to to the this subdivision plan. Yes, that is that is correct, okay. um, and, and so is the drawing up on on the screen right now. You'll see that this yes that one row of parking does technically belong to the owner of the of the Coles building, uh, and and that and that is okay because of the various agreements that are in place regarding cross access that Coles has access to those parking spaces across the the owner of the PetSmart's buildings property uh, through that reciprocal agreement that's in place. So uh, you'll notice that each lot is drawn with a, a fair amount of parking on its lot and that was done on purpose in order to ensure that each future owner can be can be guaranteed a number of spots adequate to serve their their business. Okay, thank you. Any 
Any other questions of staff at this time? Okay. Thank you. We will now go to the public testimony. Who is here to present case P14002? Mr. Chairman, Mike Bates, Central Missouri Professional Services, 2500 East McCarty Street. Um, discussion has been real good to this point. We absolutely agree with what staff has said and we provided a color visual to supplement staff and there's been a couple of questions already but as far as access and circulation on the site um, I'll call it pink lot 3a uh, that was a good comment that parking is actually platted as a part of the Coles lot that is actually their parcel and you'll see that one of the primary points of access for the uh, second phase of the development, the second and third phase, is actually what you would commonly refer to as the south entrance to Coles. And that driveway, and I apologize for the color coding because it covers some of the detail, that driveway actually circles to the back of the entire property, provides for the loading dock areas for Coles and services to PetSmart Small Shops and Dick's Sporting Goods. And then if you look closely at the green lot, lot 3C, it actually provides circulation back to Stone Ridge. And then, of course, we have the access in the middle. So the property is essentially served by three access points. Um, the overall development is covered by cross access agreements and parking agreements. The comment about the party wall, actually, Eric's explanation is entirely correct. The PetSmart was built first. There is essentially a two inch gap between those two buildings and the buildings themselves both meet the uh, international building code that the city requires developers to meet. And then the party wall, if you look at the PetSmart small shops and Dick Sporting Goods, you'll see the dark lines and the cross hatch hatching. That actually represents the footprint of the building. Of course, um, the scale is such that it's impossible to show a two inch opening between PetSmart and small shops on at least this drawing. And then if you look, small shops, obviously I think that's approximately 4,000 square feet. The blue area behind that, if you look closely, there's significant parking behind small shops too, as well as access provided to the back of that. So with that, I'll be happy. This is a part of the section one. It was driven by the Coles development initially, Buffalo Wild Wings. Um, the lots were platted and we look like, from a standpoint of ultimate use, they're pretty much what we expected. And, and of course, that's simply driven by the market. So I'll be happy to answer any questions or supplement uh, staff's report. Oh, and it was, I, I think I just would re-say that uh, Tuesday morning Board of Adjustment approved the variance as far as the lot frontage. Any questions of Mike? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is there anyone else here that would like to speak in favor of this proposal? Is there any, anyone here that would like to speak in opposition to this proposal? Seeing none, we'll close the public testimony staff report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the, I think the only thing I have to add, and, and uh, Mr. Bates had already mentioned it, is that this, uh, the, a, a variance request for the street frontage requirement, uh, it turn, turns out the street frontage requirement happens to be both in the zoning code and the subdivision code. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission has authority over variances from requirements in the subdivision code, but the Board of Adjustment has authority over variances within the zoning code. So this item was sent to the Board of Adjustment as well for a variance from that street frontage requirement. They heard the case on a Tuesday morning of this week and approved it. Uh, with their approval, uh, Essentially, the, the staff recommendation then is for, uh, does recommend approval of uh, both this requested variance from the subdivision code street frontage requirement, as well as the replat of lot three of Stone Ridge Village. I'd be happy to answer any additional questions you may have. The recommended form of the, of the two separate motions are, uh, is at the bottom of the staff report. Okay, engineering, do you have any report? Uh, the only thing I might add is that uh, the sanitary sewer and all the infrastructure is in place and that uh, sanitary sewer would exist on all three future lots. Any other questions of staff? You want to do this in two motions? 
Yes, if you could. Thank you. Okay, I believe he has a form of the two motions recommended. If somebody would like to take those on, the chair will entertain a motion of motion number one at this time. I can try that, Mr. Chairman. I move that the Planning and Zoning Commission approve the requested variance from the subdivision code requirement that all lots have street frontage in order to allow lot 3B to have no street frontage. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion passes unanimous. Dean, would you like to try the second one? You're doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> I move that the Planning and Zoning Commission approve the replat of Lot 3 of Stone Ridge Village, Section 1. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Passes unanimously. Other business, scheduled reports, Environmental Quality Commission, I believe Michael is, I know Michael is absent tonight. Does anybody else have a report for him? Yes, Ms. McMillan. I'll report. They didn't have a meeting last month, but they have a meeting this coming Tuesday. And sorry that we didn't introduce you, but this is Ms. McMillan, our executive director, our Thank big you. director. What, what's your official title? Director. Director. Yeah. That's big enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other business? Okay. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Happy Valentine's Day. We're adjourned. <laughs>